Ah, Todd's Tips. And tonight I'm going to show you how to fix problems on shuffle alleys that are electronic made between 77 and let's say uh, 84. These are the older style ones that had a motor that was open. But there's also some other tips on the pins. All you need is a can of contact cleaner. We get this brand called Max Pro. Okay pair of alligator clips, just one actually, and a trouble light. Let's go. Okay, this is going to explain a little about how the reset circuits work on any Williams shuffle alley that uses a relay to reset the pins. Now come in here and let me show you some things. Now we haven't cleaned this one yet, but this relay's job is to start the pin motor reset circuit. Now what happens is the computer, after you get a strike or a spare or anything, when the frame is over, the computer pulses this once. And do you see how it moves? It pulses it long enough that the motor makes a complete turn until it hits this divot. Now, after it pulses it, the motor continues as long as these two switches are touching. You see, if I keep my finger up here and these switches never drop out, it'll never drop. So, if you're having trouble with it, A, one or both of the switches are touching all the time, or B, the relay, even though it's kicking once, the brake is not kicking on the motor. Now, I want to show you what the brake is. If you look into this, the older shuffles have a double gang system. I don't know if you can see, maybe on this side here, you can probably see it better here. Now do you see what I'm pushing? See how that pops out? Okay, there's two of them, one on each side. Now, I want you to watch the operation of that. When I operate this motor, you're going to see that kick in, and when I let go of it, see how it pops out? That's the brake. If the brake did not work, the motor would continue to spin past the detent and it would start again. And it would keep running over and over. Now, an easy fix is in fact a can of, ooh, where is it? I thought I <laughs> Let me get a can of it. contact cleaner, not WD-40. What you're going to do is you're going to squirt it in where the brake is, right here. And then you spray it on this side. Do you see my finger movement? Okay, that's what it's supposed to do. Now watch again when I start it. You do not squirt it while the thing is turning. You do not. Now I'm keeping my finger down. As soon as they let go, it stops. So, when you, you're going to first determine two things. When you start this, and you let go of it, it should stop instantly. It should not drift. If it's drifting, it means that the brake may not have kicked in. Okay? So then you're going to squirt some on those two points. Point one side, two, and the other side. So you have that movement. Okay? Number two, you're going to make sure that these two switches are not touching. Now keep this in mind, these are 45 volts right here. So if you touch them with the power on, you can get a shock. See, there's voltage running through them. Did you see the spark? They're both designed. They have two identical switches. Identical. When this goes up, both switches are touching. They both drop off. They did this to dissipate the voltage between the two switches so the switches last much longer life. Okay, that's why they do that. That's why it's done that way. So it's a nice long life. Okay, so that's part one of our learning session today.
part two, we're going to talk about the driver board here and it's what it does. Now, these are transistors. They look like soldiers. In this machine, it doesn't use these six here on the top. These were used in pinball machines. Same board system as in a pinball machine. These were the pop uppers and slingshots. Okay? This relay is used, and all these are used. The bottom row is just sound. And then the, this, these next two rows are, in fact, the ten pins that swing up. Each one controls a different pin. Okay? And I'm going to show you now what they do. All you will need is this. Would you like to try to get a shock on this? No. Come on, please, just no. for fun. Not shocking my daughter. Kill no. you. See, if you touch this right here. Ah! Actually, nothing happens. Okay. Alligator clip. You clip it on the ground. So we can go in the corner here, like so, and then this tab touches Are they all of them? Are they all up? No, one's left. Right? We have to figure out. That was it. That was it. Mm -hmm. So, each one will knock down a pin. If one of your pins isn't going down, we have to figure out which is the one that's not making the noise. It's one of these. Remember I told you the bottom ones are sound. That one resets it. And that's done. So there's actually, there's actually only four sounds. I like this one. They're neat. Anyway. Now, if one or two of these isn't working on your game, you have to check several things. First, you do the short. If all ten work when you short it out with the ground, then the problem's on this board. It means that these are telling the pin to go up, but the signal's not going through one of these chips. But if one of these doesn't work and one pin isn't working, you have to check and see whether there's a problem on the pin itself first. That's very simple. You take your screwdriver, you take your screw out here, and you slide the drawer out. You find the pin that's not working, for convenience, we'll select this one. And you make sure the wires are still attached to it. See? Okay, now, this one coil, the last wire on the circuit, is the red wire. Okay, and it's attached. So if the pin before it, which is back here, is working, if the red wire came off of one of those pins, then anything after it wouldn't work. Sort of like if a light bulb on an old Christmas tree string, all the bulbs after a certain light go out. It doesn't go on. But the chances of the coil being bad are almost zero. Almost zero. So we don't have to look there. We really don't. This this has this machine, by the way, has not been serviced yet. It's a mess. Oh, was ready to go out. Looks like, looks like the crap it's a mess. Off. Oh, right. So mean to me. Anyway, that's part one. Part two. Come back here. But this is part three now. The second place to check is the cable where the pins go. Now, see all these? These are the what they call interconnect cables. These all connect between the front and the back. Uh, they connect the head to the body. We have found in it every so often that one of the cables is actually loose. It's actually come apart. So what we would do is find the cable that carries all of the color wires that goes to it. Let me just confirm that. Here. 
Looks like the brown wires. So we find the one that has a lot of brown wires in it. Well, it has some. That could be it. Let me see. That one doesn't. That one I know is all the light bulbs and the switches. So it kind of limits us to how many or what it is. So once we find it, oh, Amanda, how about if you hold this for me? Just like that, and I can show everybody what's inside these. When you unplug it, if you look in the end, you're seeing all the little silver tabs. Okay, some of them are not used. Look over here. First thing you should do is check to make sure none of the silver tabs, either the male or female, slid out. Okay? If one slid back a bit, that would cause the pin not to work. Okay? Also, re-secure it. Make sure it's plugged in tight. Okay? So you want to make sure that's in nice and tight. There's no chance there's a, a, a fault there. While you're at it, you could always check the other ones. And make sure they are in tight. Not only tight, but make sure there are no pins that are uneven. You will find a couple of empty holes. They don't use every pin. But that's an important thing to check. Now, if it worked, and then it didn't, and then you didn't move it, you didn't unplug anything, you didn't take it apart and move it down to Aunt Bertha's house or something, it probably isn't a connector. It's either at the pin itself or someplace else. If everything is intact so far, there's one more thing you can do. Let me show you. And it's using that same alligator clip. Let's suppose that this pin didn't work, but this one did. What you could do, and this is very important that you get this right, is you connect one of the alligator clips to one side of the pin. Not the ground side. Remember, the ground wire is the heavier wire. The power wire. The power wire. The, the other side wire. is the ground wire. This is going to confuse people. And then you connect this here. Yes, I always call it that because the power it means the power is here at all times. So there's 40 volts present, and this board turns, lets the voltage flow through and tells it to go on. But the heavy wire is on the side you're not jumping out because we know that's good. Now if you play the game and this pin works, it goes up and down and doesn't, it doesn't, it stays down when it first resets. That was the problem, I think, in some cases. When you reset all the pins like this, they're all down. Yep. Okay. If one of our pins wasn't going up, oh, I see this pin is broken. Yeah, the reset part broke. That's not going to work right anyway, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Your daddy needs to be spanked. So I'm going to move it to this one instead. Because we know this one works. So, if I <clears throat> were to tell this pin to swing up by hitting this side, like so, it swung this one up when it shouldn't have because this signal told this and that means the coil and the ground is good. Power. The power <clears throat> and the ground, yes, the double wire. But it also means the coil is good, so it rules out the coil. Mechanism's good and not gummed up. Right. So the mechanism, the beauty of this, this, this system, and it, it's an incredibly great system that Williams came up with, is that when the pin swings down, it resets itself, do you see? And just the slightest touch kicks it up. So if somebody hits it, or even if you slid a little baby down the alley, the baby could never get hurt because the, it would instantly swing up, A, and B, when the pin section went back to reset it, this is the reset arm. There's no way, it's not connected to the pin. So if the pin encounters something on its way down, it will not it will not stay connected it'll immediately drop no matter what you do it'll never ever connect 
So they've kept the motor isolated. If the motor was connected directly to the pin and something obstructed it from resetting, everything would bend, the motor would overheat, it would be a disaster. But William's clever design meant that it's impossible for a failure because of the disconnect. Now, now, do you see this screw right here? This is the, your only adjustment that you may have to make. That screw. What? <gasps> She's just having fun. That's okay, honey. You can do another. Mm -hmm. What do you all at my kid? Well, no, she's fine. Uh, this is school day. It's a day off. So Amanda was here today. And she's mm -hmm. been very good. Most of the time. Yes, yeah, she's, she not being she's been very part. good today. <laughs> she's been very good. Say, look at the camera say hi. <laughs> you know, she grew up here. She was such a little baby when she first started coming. Her little here. sister's growing up here yeah, too. Yeah, and her sister is too. Look at that. Man, how old are you now? Nine. She's nine. And what grade are you in? Uh, fourth. Fourth grade, and she's incredibly and my smart. In preschool. And she preschool takes one. after her mother. Definitely does. On her father's side. <laughs> Are you I'm learning like, anything? Have I could, uh, no. Anyway, let's get back to no, the screw. No, everybody's long asleep. That screw, sometimes you have to tighten just a hair. So it pushes this a little further down to reset. Now, when you get a game from us, we take, we all this is washed out. this down. is going to work, so you're going to have to learn how to adjust all these. It's going to be filthy. All the transistors are going to be exploded. The junk that we sell. <clears throat> 40 years of junk. 41. I'll boast. <laughs> now, now I lost my train of thought. Your train of thought still boarding at the station. Doesn't take much. No, it doesn't. You're going to finish this like today or well, next week. Okay. The number three biggest problem with the shuffles. Actually, the number one problem, these, these are additional <coughs> issues you could encounter, are these rollovers themselves. If you have a problem with your game, before you call us, sweep all the pins out of the way, and look, eyeball all the rollers. They all should be about the same height up. If one of them is down a little bit like that, okay? Take your index finger and do this and work it until it pops up again. <laughs> I didn't use my middle finger. Uh, Amanda, work one of the switches. Go ahead, sweetie. Go ahead, sweetie. Work it. That's right. It's easier this way. It's faster. So what happens is the sand uh, kind of gets, it gels. It gets all clumped. And then by you doing that, it breaks the sand free, and then it drops into the tray below. And then well, it'll definitely gum up if you got it from us. The biggest problem is if we don't give you a fire extinguisher with it, so make sure you get one before you. Why? Especially if I worked on it. And also, you got a brand new puck with it. Never play with a puck that has a wear mark in it. This puck needs to be destroyed. Well, the game is traded in, Frank, and we have to go over it. The thing, this thing is awful. Look at these rails. Are cr it's dreadful. Dreadful. Anyway. Oh, it's as dreadful as this video. <sighs> God, I'm bored. Bored? I mean, I'm, I'm giving all these wonderful tips. Free advice? To help everybody get their games going again, Frank. This may do it. <clears throat> so, I like this is helpful. Actually, the, I'm making the video for one of our customers that I'm hoping will solve the problem. We may have to get you some dissolves, so the contact cleaner. If you buy contact cleaner, make sure it's the kind that dissipates, that it doesn't stick. <coughs> you don't want it, you want it to evaporate. It works, it cleans, and then it evaporates. That stuff we've been using is terrific. Um, uh, also, a lot of the things, if you're having, if you have a shuffle out you didn't buy from us, the capacitors are all dried out. This is an original 40-year-old capacitor, and the bottom of it's actually exploded. Okay, and then the two display capacitors, and then this cap. This rarely goes bad, but we always put all four new ones in. 
I think Frank, you serviced this already, right? No, I didn't do this one. You didn't think so? Yes, you did. No. Yeah, you just did it. That's not the one I just did. Well, it's it was done. It so wasn't me. Perhaps four new capacitors. So maybe it was. We have your battery board here. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, Frank, you changed all I these sockets. I forgot to take that out and throw it away. Oh. Go smash it. We have a brand new edge of the connectors here. On this one, we had to change them. They were all bad. And then we have the switch. These make the switches more sensitive. They're called zero ohm resistors. They're either the white ones with the black line or you put a staple in. By the way, if you have a game and these are resistors, these seven and that eighth one, take them out and put in either a staple out of your office staple. It'll fit in the holes exactly the same way or put a zero ohm resistor. It's the same thing. Your switches become a hair more sensitive. And Williams required that on all their pinball machines made after 1980 because there were so many fast switch closures. When you play this game, the puck flies down. So I would think you're definitely better off um, with a switch closure. And thus ends another one of my Todd's tips. Did you like that, Amanda? Did you like it? No. Wow! Wretched little girl. Good night. Stay tuned. If we can dream it. Tomorrow's child. Then we can do it.